Hey everyone, Bean Seattle here, and we're back on another episode. On today's episode, we're going to work on the Kimco X-Town 300, the 2022 model, because we're going to learn how to take apart some of the fairings, the tub, so we can run wiring for heated grips. So let's get to work, because this is Bean Seattle's Garage. get started on this project this is a big one believe it or not a lot has to come off uh, so you can run a wire from one side to the other so you can get to the battery it's a job and a half and the reason for this is because the handlebars are actually covered by plastic so you can't really run wiring because it's hidden it's covered you have to take the plastics apart so you get the wiring through there and then the problem is that since you have these gigantic floorboards over here, uh, I tried to run a, a wire and, and run it through and try to feed it. Just was not successful. I've, I've tried and I tried and I tried to just, just couldn't do it. So we're going to pretty much tear apart most of the top of this, the body and this, uh, the handlebars so we can get a little bit more control for our wiring so we can run everything over. And then we can actually power on the power of the heated grip so we can ride with comfort uh, during the cold mornings here in Ramona, California. So first things first, you gotta get your key to your ignition. You're gonna run it over and pop your seat open. So let's get that, grab the key. And we're gonna turn it, I believe, yep, to the left. That opens the, the hatch here. Now we have all the seat already taken apart so I'm gonna give you guys an easy breakdown on how the seat comes off. It's super, super simple, but I don't want to damage anything. Um, if you come on, come on over here, there's two bolts right there on that shock, and there's two more on the end of the seat. You take those four bolts off, and you just pull straight up, and the seat comes right off. Now this gets us to the tub. So the tub is the really, not so hard, but annoying big piece. So once you reach the tub portion, when you, can, when you remove the four bolts, the two here and two here, they're 10 millimeters. Make sure you got something with a little bit deep of a socket, because if not, you're not gonna be able to reach it. You have one, two, three, four more bolts on top of that. So like I was talking about, you have the one here, one here, and then you have the two here on the end. Can't put those in, and you got these two, and you got these two back here, and then there's two more. Oh yeah, well that's it, yeah, that's pretty much it. So you have two, four that hold the actual tank to get the whole bucket, and then there's two lights right here on the end right here, guys, so be careful when you yank the bucket out or the tub. Uh, you don't damage the wiring. We already unplugged it, so that comes right out. Now this gives us pretty much the full access to the engine. You can do your valve cover, do your valves here. Um, this is the wire for the actual... Um, this is the wire for the heated grips that we're going to run. Um, and then you could do all your maintenance here. This is super cool. You have your chain maintenance, your uh, injector, your throttle body, your air intake. Uh, actually, this is the injector. This is the throttle body, uh, the TPS. I think this, yeah, this is the throttle, throttle position sensor. Um, and all your basic vacuum stuff. There's nothing crazy about this engine, again, but it's big. It's a big 300cc motor, and it's powerful. This is a very powerful motor. Um, so... What we need to do is get the wiring from all the way up here down this way so we can actually plug everything in place. But it's been, been quite a hassle, honestly. So now the next step here is we want to pull these covers off, which I already did. There's two screws, one, one here and here, and then this comes off all one piece just like that. 
Oh no, there's no screws, they just pop in. <laughs> so that gives us more uh, exposure here. And these guys, again, these pretty much just pop into place. They don't really screw in. Um, it's again, super easy. You'll see there's no, there's no screws anywhere. Uh, it just pops. Just be careful when you pop it. And it pop when you when you pop these, you pull away. So you grab it from here and you pull away, and it'll pop open. Okay. Your fuel pump and your ascending unit is all right here. If you would need to access or replace it, it's super accessible. It's really really easy. Um, so the next step here is to get access to further into the body so we can start running wiring up here. Okay, so you have a screw here and you have a screw that goes straight up and down. I used a little ratchet with the number one Phillips screwdriver uh, head on it and I was able to ratchet it out and pull them all both out. The one that goes on top is this weird rounded one and then the one that goes against the side of the body is the the one with the actual like a uh, ratchet head on it, okay? Make sure you keep those organized and not lost. Okay, so the next step is once you finish this side, you need to work on the actual mirror next. The mirror has to come off so the cover can come off with it. So to remove the mirror, Shouldn't be that hard. I haven't done it before, but we're gonna figure it out right now. Let's see. Remember I took these off last time. Just gotta remember how I did it. There we go. But there's a wire right here. I'm trying to find the connector for it. So the connector for the actual headlight uh, mirror sits right underneath here. So we have to take these off, kind of like goofy like, not completely, you can't take them off completely, but you have to pop them up, take the, disconnect the wires and then you can pull the, uh, the mirror out. Okay, so now I have all four screws, the bottom and the top taken off. I'm gonna see if it'll let me pop it open. Cool. So now I have access to this. There it is. See, that's what we're trying to pull out right here. Pinch, pull, disconnected, yay. And the reason why it was a pain because this thing didn't allow us to actually give us the room that we needed to pop out the plastic, that really hard plastic piece that's in there. This rubber grommet is quite annoying. Okay. So you see here, this rubber grommet that I'm trying to get going for you guys is the next annoyance that you'll have. There you go. Then you grab it, pinch it, pull it. Push it back down. Okay, 
Now that's done. Now you can actually, should be able to I wouldn't do that. You have one down here. There's a bolt down here. You can probably use to take this off. Yep, right there. Let's see if I can take it off from the base instead of up here on the top. All right, so I got the first mirror off. It was pretty straightforward. You need a 17 wrench and break it loose. I'm going to show you guys over here on on the other one so you guys can see what I'm doing. So you want to get at the base of the actual mirror. Don't mess with the other ones on top. Once you turn it, it should break it just loose enough so you can turn it all the way around and just whirl it around in circles. Whirl around. Just like that. All right. So now we have the top off. This gives us exposure to the steering. <gasps> Finally. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, you don't know how excited this is. Um, so we have a screw here and a screw here. And then that lets us pull this whole bottom cover out. I'm gonna use my drill. Couldn't, may wanna. Just low, a little torque. That lets us pull this guy out. Kinda. <laughs> oh, there it is. Like that. Kind of a tight fit. Oh no, it won't come out. So the wires that go through here won't let it come out. You have to disconnect the wiring from from this guy to pull it out, but it's okay. We don't need to yank it out completely. We just needed to get to this. This is where I needed to be. So I'm not gonna yank it out. So I'm okay with not yanking it out. All right, so what I needed is just full exposure to this piece so I can run wire, uh, pretty much a, a feed wire down here. So I was trying to feed it like through a corner and it just, just was not successful. Now I can go down, straight down this way and I could probably pull, pull it out through here to the side of the body. We'll see when I get to that point. But yeah, this is pretty much where I needed to be for getting this bike a little bit more where I want to be at to get it working, to get heated grips on this guy going. Because we need to feed, these are the wires that to feed down the, uh, the actual steering column down here, so we can use them, you know? All right, let's go to the next step. Finally, after like a while, <laughs> I have success. So I fed the wire in the front of the, the pretty much of the, uh, the handlebar here and then I fed it down I'll give you guys a better view here so 
So I fed it through the handle, the front of the handlebar, not the back over here. You gotta feed it to the front. That's where all the other wires are going through. Fed it through there, got it to finally hoop underneath, and then there we are. So now that I have it fed this way, what I wanna do is kind of follow the factory routing of the wire over here. So I'm not in the way of anything or in the heat of anything. And when I put the tub back in, it's kind of like in a good spot. I don't have to worry about it being damaged. So right here is a good spot to feed the wire through. So all we need is just this portion of the wire to go all the way up and then I'll, I'll hold it here and then we'll feed it out this way because it'll, it'll extend further once we have it mounted correctly. So what you want to do is kind of like wrap it a nice like And then what you want to do at the end of this right here, you want to wrap the end of this with electrical tape. And the reason for this, you want to make it like a surface so it kind of feeds through and doesn't get caught in something. Then you have to try to reverse the process, which is a lot more fun than you think it is. <laughs> so I've got some electrical tape. Yeah, we're just going to wrap it just like that and you'll see how like it kind of makes like a little slope that's all we want is a nice little slope and try to prevent snags as much as possible that's all we're trying to do so now we're gonna grab it feed it through and pull ever so gently. Come on. This is where I'm concerned about. It's tight. It's a really tight spot right there. Concern. I'm gonna be able to find a spot, but it's gonna be a very, very snug spot. <laughs> so that failed. Like I told you guys, you know, it, th this frame is like right here, and it wants to feed through right there, and it didn't work. We're gonna try to shoot for down underneath the frame. And hopefully we have a better result down this way instead of on top of the tube. We'll see what happens if I feed it through there. Well, not supposed to come out through there, buddy. Jeez, buddy. the front grill. Okay, so we're right here. Found a better spot. We're going down. 
Let's see how that works. All right. Second, uh, second try on Nick's bike. So we have comfort. Close enough, nowhere near close enough to the battery, but that's not the point. We're going to get to the battery once we run our wiring and we run our pigtails for it. But this is where we needed to be. Ah, finally. Okay, so. On the center console or center cover of the, of the bike, we're gonna mount the heated controls right here. Um, I was thinking about mounting the controls on here, but the problem is that since these are covered, you really can't just mount heated controls on it. It just won't let you because of the design that this is. So I fed the wiring through the throttle cable down here, and then we're gonna have it sit right above here just like that. It's not gonna look the greatest, but I mean, it'd probably be the best option we have uh, instead of like trying to just make holes and damage stuff. I'm not a huge fan of that. I'll see how it'll turn out before I start cutting things up and then doing that. Um, Cause I, I feel like I might have to end up cutting a hole right here on top of it just to feed the wire down below and then Hide it, which will probably end up what I I might end up doing. Uh, I'll see right now. Once I get the um, other wiring fed, and then see how that looks, and it should we should go that route probably. Okay. So one thing that you're gonna need to do is what we did uh, as well. Um, on the factory grips, you are going to need to cut some of the stuff down, sand it down as much as you can. You want this not as smooth, but as um, clean as possible because you're going to have a lot of surface area that this is going to need to fit, the, to the heated grip needs to fit onto. Uh, I did the same thing on my uh, Royal Enfield. I had to sand, shave off with the blade the surface area. So this can fit on here nicely and then I can just jam it on and then obviously you want to put a ton of uh, grip glue as well inside of this. You also want to decide where you want this. Once you have it on, this sucker is going to be near impossible to remove and then you're going to be able to, you might end up damaging it. So since this is a scooter, just so you guys know, your throttle, you know, coincides with your brake. You have a ton of space for your brake right here. So you might want the throttle like right there. So it doesn't block, but I don't like the way that looks. So usually about right there with the wire sticking out like that. When you turn the throttle, it's almost vertical on the other side. If you want a little bit more right there. And then that'll give you pretty much a nice clean install and it, it will do what you need to do uh, nicely and then you'll be good. So 
I'm going to run the wiring over here and I'll give you guys a close up on how I ran it so you guys can see if you guys want to do the same okay. thing. All right, guys. So what ended up becoming the problem once I um, got this sucker installed, I'll show you guys in just a minute here. Okay, so on your actual throttle tube here, you have all these little bars. You'll see like these little bars right here. You need to shave them off with the razor blade, completely off. And the reason for this is because the hard portion on the inside of this um, heated grip, what it does is that when you put it on, the little knobs put too much pressure on the throttle and it was locking the throttle for us. If you didn't do that, it, it would prevent the throttle from turning and your throttle would get stuck wide open and that's it, that's, that's super dangerous. So, uh, so what we ended up doing is shaving about half of them. There's still a couple down here at the bottom it isn't preventing the throttle from uh, sticking, but I'm still gonna shave the rest of them off just for just for my personal, you know, how you say, uh, preference, but that's it. Where well, you did that, and that way we can push the throttle almost all the way in. So we got to here. And then what I'm gonna do is I fed the wire right over here underneath the this guy right here and the reason why I fit it there because it doesn't look too bad and it doesn't prevent the throttle see and you can still turn on the ignition right there and that's how I want it I mat kind of matched it on the other side it doesn't really matter how you do it on the other side because there's nothing over there uh, you're gonna apply a bunch of grip glue on the inside slide it on and call it done um, the wiring is pretty much straightforward uh, on this scooter, uh, we have to extend the wires because it's so far. So the wiring is right here. And you'll see with all the wiring ran, I probably get up to here. And it still doesn't reach the battery. So we're going to extend the wire by another foot just for safety. And that way we can run the wiring over here and over. And then plug it into the power. And then you're going to find a spot to ground it. Do not plug in the ba the don't plug in the the cable into the battery. It will short out the uh, the the cable. You got to run it to the chassis ground. If you don't, it won't properly uh, ground itself, and you'll have issues down the road. Um, if you want, I'm looking for like a ground point. Let's see if we can find a ground good ground spot for you. Uh, you can use the bra the back of the bracket of this guy for the seat that, um, that unlocks the seat. You can use that. Um, that's a good spot to to ground the uh, the ground cable uh, because it is actually going to the main frame of the bike. So that's not a bad spot. Plug those two in. Um, what now I'm going to end up doing is for the controller itself. We're gonna run the controller up here just like that actually no we're gonna we're gonna pull the controller out we're gonna drill a hole onto the cover we're gonna drill a hole about right here at the bottom of the top cover and we're gonna run the wiring through here and then we're gonna use the metal plate that this comes with on the on this guy to give us the the mounting holes the mounting holes right here we're gonna center it, put them on, drill the holes, and then screw it in from the back. And then that should be it. That's all we need to do to mount the controller to here. Um, so it's gonna look like this. Like this. On here on the controller. Just like that. And we're gonna run feed the wiring right underneath here. It's gonna look really good. Um, and it should be just enough so I can actually drill the holes right through. Yeah, we're going to cut the bracket with my uh, cutting wheel here. So the bracket itself, this guy right here, we're going to cut off the end of it so I can use the four holes here for the mounting bracket. I could just use it as a template, just flip it upside down and then mark the holes and then drill through and that should be it too again it's up to you guys i'm thinking about using the bracket i don't know yet but 
it's optional um it's not really the best spot for it you see here the bracket's meant to like mount it on the on the actual like handlebar controls but it's dumb because it doesn't because the steering the the handlebar has a cover and you have to drill a gigantic hole for this to fit and it's just dumb i wouldn't want to do that so i'd rather just put it on the center and then drill the hole through it and feed it through and it worked beautifully um we fed the wiring through the back. We got to unplug everything again. I just test fitted everything. Everything fits beautifully. Um, and that's it. I'll come back and show you guys the finished product once it's all done. So you guys can see how nice it came out. All right, guys. So what I ended up doing was mounting the controller like this. I took off the old Kimco badge. And so I used the metal plate to center the square and make my pilot holes. You can see here it's now screwed in in the back we made a big old hole to feed the wire right through it so now we have the controllers right on the center pretty much of the bike and it's not in view and in the way of anything it just you can immediately just go whoop and go up up and down 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 easy like that super super easy feed so now i have this and i'll just have it feed up and over like that over the handlebar and just feed it in and then finish the route pretty easy and it doesn't look horrible it doesn't look like it has something on top of the handlebar here it's just chilling on the side so i like it i like it a lot so we're gonna stick with it i already did the work so <laughs> might as well um but yeah let me finish it all up and i'll show you guys how i ended up doing everything so you guys can see right here you see this metal bar right here you want to feed the wire behind here there's a hoop back here you can run it back there that way it prevents it rubbing on the actual uh, plastic here uh, they did apply a bunch of grease on here so it prevents it from rubbing and digging a hole but i don't think that's going to prevent anything over time it's just going to wear off and disappear um, like i showed you how i ran my wiring i did that so these guys, again, these two are the actual grips. We're gonna need to run the controller wire down this way, feed it down and then go there. So here's this guy. And then there's no particular order that these go in. Um, left is left and right is right. They don't tell you on here. They just pretty much just, just match them up. Uh, whatever fits, you know, goes. Um, just like this. So this is, the, you'll notice that they'll have a, uh, they're wired a little differently, so they only go, they only go one way. Just, just want to tell you guys, these, these wires only go one way, so you have no wrong way of installing this. It's very, very straightforward. So we have all of them fed. I mean, um, not fed, but uh, merged. I'm gonna pull the wiring over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hoop it down underneath here, like I said, but I'm gonna hoop it. Uh, let's see. Prevent this from falling. There you go. down here what you're trying to do is push it down okay and then you want to feed the wire behind it behind that little metal bar it just benefits you guys just like that now you can have all this access wire on top. It doesn't hurt anything because it's sitting on top and you're just gonna put the cover back on just like that and then snap it into place. I'm gonna tug on this wire a little bit more if I can. Just to get some extra slack. Cause I'm almost to the battery, which is actually pretty impressive. Um, so 
we're going to turn the wheel. You'll see there's nothing rubbing there. So we're good on our part right here. So now I'm going to snap. Uh, oh, I got two screws that have to go up here. Let me show you guys before I just cover you guys in the camera. Let me get you guys situated better. So remember the two screws we took off here on the inside of the uh, setup before you put the top cover on, okay? Now one thing I want to make sure you guys understand, these uh, for the turn signals, make sure they're hooped this way, not towards the front, towards the back, okay? On both sides, towards the back. Don't hoop them on the front. What's going to happen, they're going to snag and they're going to be hard to take out. You want these out here and you're going to feed them out of the plastic container and when you couldn't connect them push them back in okay that's all you got to do there's no they just sit they just sit right here so you don't have like a special place besides where they are right now so you'll feed this and then you'll do this really quick just like that and when you make sure when you close the plan when you clasp the uh, plastic down they sit on the back not on the front And you gotta put this stupid plastic back together now. I hate plastic. That thing goes back the way you always want it to sit. See, I got the light out of this one, but I didn't get it out of this one yet. That's what I need to get. Yeah, that's why I got it. So I was saying, try to feed it out. If not, it's a, it becomes a little bit of an issue, but nothing crazy. Nothing you can't undo since you haven't bolted anything in yet. But that looks dope. I love the way this looks. It looks better than the actual logo. <laughs> I actually like that a lot. You know, and it's on there solid. So now he has full control on his bike right in the middle. And it's not in the way of anything. It's not up here. It's just boop, 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 yeah, up and down. And that's it. Very, very nice. I actually thoroughly like this install job a lot more than I thought it would. Um, the black actually blends really, really well with the black uh, cover. So again, you can't tell that I giant made a giant hole down here. But you can, but... You gotta look for it. Still, again, not bad. I thoroughly enjoying this uh, this DIY on this bike. Um, now, remember, I haven't glued these in yet, so uh, don't close this up. Make sure you can actually pull these guys out and then feed them back in before you do that. Because if not, you're not gonna be able to <laughs> to, to do this job. We gotta take this off. This one is not coming out. There you go. Okay. So before you, um, you know, finish off and close everything off, I already showed you how everything else goes back. So. Um, once you have a set spot where everything's going to go, now you can glue your, your, um, your um, <laughs> grips in place. Um, find where you want to put them and where you think it's going to look the best for you. So I have a couple of decisions I've made for myself. Um, this is the way I like the way they look on some spots. 
Now, the grip on the throttle is a little different uh, on your decision, okay guys? Because, again, you need to understand where the throttle has to sit. Um, so, on the uh, left side, I have it pretty much flush with it, but on the, on the right side, you can't flush it um, because it will drag on this plastic piece. So, we don't want it to drag. So, that's where we want to be. And you see how like this cable sits? You can either have it do that or sit down further down. But you want it not to not to snag, okay? So you have to find that that happy spot with the throttle so it doesn't snag for you. See right there, for me this is the best, especially with the cable pulled in. Yeah, it comes out this way, but it's still, it's preventing the fur snagging here and there. So we know now that the throttle needs to sit right there, okay? Because there's no cable play, there's play. You always have a decent amount of play up and down, and then you got your throttle. And you make sure it comes all the way back. If you do that, that is where you need to have your throttle. Unfortunately, it looks like this, but it's it's that or you, your, acceler your accelerator throttle is stuck open. So make that decision, you know? Um, so the next step is gluing the crap out of these and you gotta glue the crap out of them. If not, they will not stay in place. So we'll be using Moto Pro. Uh, this stuff is gri called grip glue. So what you want to do is slather the on the actual uh, um, grip, not the ins not this guy, but the actual grip itself. So the throttle. I'm sorry. Okay, about half of it. Okay, on here. Then what you want to do is uh, on the inner portion on this side the the side that goes in because what's going to happen you're going to push this way all this glue is going to come this way back so as you go like this it, you're going to have a lot of uh, glue trying to make its way to the over here and over here towards the back so if you do about half of it just a ton of it all the way and just like a little bit over here and here and then you slather the inside of it you go in and it'll hold beautifully So right now I'm slathering the, the actual throttle with grip glue. And then I'm gonna go up and down, up and down, here, down here. And if you want to, I mean, you can use your finger. Just make sure you clean your hand off. This stuff burns. And then, slide this guy on. to go further in like really bad but I can't because this guy this guy is already really close to the to the, the to the actual controller here so it's gonna prevent it from spinning nice and free as it is right now so there's that one now we're gonna repeat the process on the left uh, grip. 
Okay, so now we're on the left side and we're gonna slather this one too. A bunch of grip glue. Once you get it on there, you better get that grip going because they won't let you, they won't let you, what's it called, uh, take it off once you <laughs> get it on. Right there, that's where I want to be. So we now have the grip installed on the left side. The right one's gonna, we gotta wait for the right one to sit and cure for a while. I got my finger covered in grip glue. Uh, again, this stuff dries very, very quick. So make sure you do the job quick. If not, you're gonna get stuck with a throttle that's gonna just be covered in grip glue and stuck halfway and you gotta have to figure out how to yank it off. Now what you want to do is again, you let it sit to cure for a while, usually about 10 to 20 minutes. It should be just good enough for you to give it a little little tug, but don't don't try to just manhandle it. No, just leave it alone. Let the glue cure for a while. Um, Cause it's, again, it's got to do its job. It's got to cure and it's got to solidify to hold the grip in place. If not, it's just going to stay there and it's not, it's going to, you have to do the work all over again, clean all the glue off and whatnot. So, Try not to just like mess around with it. Uh, the next step in is again, is I'm gonna go back and redo all the wiring. Uh, not redo it, but uh, feed it back and then get it all ran and then we're done. I'm gonna put the whole bike back together. Okay, so I found a really cool spot to actually um, power the heated grips. Uh, there's a direct battery connection right over here for the, pretty much the ignition coil. So I ran the power to the um, the heated grips to there. There's a little 10 millimeter nut right above it. And then I grounded it to the, 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 the latch for the seat. And then it gives me really easy access to the uh, fuse right here. So I just set it aside. That's it. Ran it all the way down, over, and up the way we had it. You're going to see. Looks good. It's all right there. Grips are on. We're good to go. I'm good to already. I just gotta install the the mirrors and the turn signals. Bike's done. Ah, super excited. Thought this would take be a lot more difficult um, when I first started it originally, and then I kind of got a little overwhelmed. But then I figured it all out. Uh, the next thing I got to do is fix the kickstand and the actual center stand on this bike. They bent a little bit, so we got to fix those. But that's it. That's it, everyone. Thank you for tuning in on this episode. Uh, Pinch House Garage with motorcycles. We're working on a Kimco X-Town 300i installing new heated grips. This is a 2022 model. So if you get one of these, awesome. Phenomenal scooter, super efficient, and it's powerful. It'll do 80 miles an hour. It actually can hit highway speeds with no issues. All right. Peace out, everyone. You guys have yourself a wonderful day. And as always here at Pinch House Garage, we're going to break, we're going to fix, and we're going to repeat. Deuces.